the war lost by Cornelius, what happened to Caesar's son. After Caesar's death, something happened to the apes that divided them. More than 300 years later, it seems that Caesar's teachings have been corrupted, and many apes have not heard of him. Everything points to a great war, one that could be lost in time. But now comes the most unsettling part of Cornelius's war theory. It is possible that Cornelius understood that the way to help his civilization and his species was to erase the history of Caesar. In this video, we will be talking about a battle that divided the apes forever, the War of Cornelius. And for more videos from the Planet of the Apes universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Oasis Geek. The war against the relentless Alpha Omega militia had finally come to an end. But at an unspeakable cost to the tribe, the death of their leader, Caesar. Despite having found their long-desired Eden, a natural paradise far from human influence, the loss of their visionary leader and loved ones left a deep scar. Among the survivors was Caesar's youngest son Cornelius, a young ape who had witnessed the murder of his mother and brother at the hands of the soldiers. What happened to Cornelius after this tragedy? How did he assume leadership of the tribe after the death of his father? And most intriguingly, how could a second war have occurred that split the apes years later into two warring factions, those of Proximus Caesar and Noah? Once settled in Eden, Cornelius may have initially assumed a secondary role in the leadership of the tribe. Still very young and traumatized by the loss of his family, he may have sought guidance and support from figures such as Maurice. It is likely that Cornelius began to show the same leadership qualities as his father, earning the respect and loyalty of many apes. Over time, however, internal divisions within the tribe may have arisen. Some apes, eager to maintain peace and harmony in Eden, might have advocated a policy of total isolation, avoiding any contact with humans. Others, perhaps led by Cornelius, might have believed that Caesar's legacy was to build a world where apes and humans could coexist peacefully. This ideological division could have caused a bitter dispute over the leadership of the tribe. Cornelius, as Caesar's rightful heir, could have led the apes who wished to follow his father's dream of striving for peaceful coexistence. In contrast, a dissident leader, ancestor of Proximus Caesar, could have gathered the most radical and xenophobic apes, willing to eradicate any human presence from their territory. The tension between these two factions could have gradually escalated, leading to a second civil war among the apes. A war perhaps fought not only for control of Eden, but also for the legacy and vision of Caesar himself. Cornelius, guided by his father's ideals, may have led his faction in defense of peace and coexistence with humans, while Proximus's ancestor Caesar and his followers may have sought total ape domination of Earth. It is possible that both factions were forced to leave Eden, splitting the apes into two separate tribes. Proximus's ancestor Caesar and his loyal followers may have established a new home somewhere far away, perhaps in the ruins of an ancient human harbor, where there are abandoned ships and where they would try to rebuild the society that hunted the humans. On the other hand, Cornelius and his apes could have barricaded themselves in a natural fortress, preparing for an eventual confrontation with the side that pursued the humans. In the trailer, we see how Noah has marks on his chest, which point to the fact that he could be an ancestor of Caesar. But we also see scenes in which Proximus Caesar is talking to Noah and explaining the history of humans, which could suggest that Noah's tribe knows nothing of the past. It is possible that this was on purpose because Cornelius created his own civilization away from humans, and they purposely erased the history in order to prevent the apes from being interested in human technology, something that is happening with Proximus Caesar's tribe. Perhaps Cornelius recognized that Caesar's pacifist dream, while noble, was too risky. In a world where apes were still seen by surviving humans as a threat. To protect his species, Cornelius could have chosen to found a new ape society, removed from any human influence, deliberately eliminating all traces of Caesar's history and his coexistence with humans. This deep division between the apes could have persisted for centuries, 
with sporadic and violent clashes between the two factions. Until finally, at the time of the setting of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, the tribe of Noah, a descendant of Cornelius, and the tribe of Proximus Caesar, find themselves once again facing off over control of the territory and by the fundamental question of how to deal with the surviving humans. Meanwhile, the rival faction led by Proximus Caesar's ancestor would have kept Caesar's memory alive, but distorted. Caesar wished to expand the domain of the apes so that they would be free, but Proximus wishes to expand in order to conquer. Two different philosophies, but born from the same place. Now, when this movie was announced, many websites claimed that the protagonist was Cornelius and the woman was Nova, something that was quickly discarded by the producers. But perhaps we could see a flashback to the time of Cornelius explaining the origin of these two factions, showing how Proximus Caesar's ancestor created this new tribe and how Caesar's teachings were distorted. These flashbacks could show us how the division between the followers of Cornelius and those of Proximus Caesar's ancestor brewed during the years after Caesar's death. Perhaps we will witness the intense debates and growing ideological tension that eventually led to the Cornelius War. That devastating confrontation which split the ape society into two irreconcilable sides. Imagine a scene where Cornelius, still young but assuming leadership of the tribe, passionately defends his father's pacifist legacy against the more radical apes hostile to humans. We could see how his determination to preserve Caesar's vision clashes with the bitterness and resentment of those who have suffered far too much at the hands of humans. I think it is possible that Cornelius lost his life in such a civil war, and that was the cause why Noah's tribe is at a disadvantage against Proximus Caesar's tribe. I believe that Proximus's tribe were the victors of that civil war. Spiritual beliefs and practices would also have diverged drastically. The followers of Cornelius, influenced by Caesar's pacifist vision, may have developed a spirituality centered on the veneration of nature and the connection with all forms of life. Perhaps this is why we see images of shamans and a ritual where Noah must connect spiritually with a falcon. Whereas the rival tribe with its focus on conquest might have adopted a more warlike religion, exalting strength dominance and the superiority of apes over other species. This would be the reason why Proximus wishes to acquire more technology for his side. I think there is a lot of history in those 300 years, and we don't know what happened, but the biggest mystery will be why the apes have divided and have forgotten the true teachings of Caesar, and this is something we could see in Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. But tell me, what do you think about all this? Will we see Cornelius's civil war? Or do you think it happened differently? And for more videos of your favorite series and movies, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on. The Oasis Geek.